Okay. Well, uh, first off, we want to thank you, Dr. Hengren, for having us here. We are experts in our field of heated water temperature control. Um, the objective of our um, procedure or project here was to control um, the heat system and also to reject any disturbances that may appear in our system. So the way that we did this is that we built a board um, with a thermistor, which is just a temperature uh, device, um, and we took temperatures of a system which was a shower, and that's what we used, and the disturbance was a sink, both of which were competing for the hot water. Um, we performed a doublet test with our shower, um, and so with that we had a first, first order um, system with our thermistor, and then a first order with our shower, and so we took the you know, with the first orders in series, making a second order, we took that and fit it to a first order system. You can see here on the right, this is just a graph, um, just some information on the um, uh, materials that we have for the thermistor. This just um, relates the resistance to the temperature there. Um, here are some uh, of our data that we collected. This shows the disturbance of our sink on the shower temperature. As you can see, it's nonlinear, and so we had to fit it to a graph. Um, it was dependent on where our valve position was. The graph here in the middle um, shows that. Um, our parameters overall that we were able to obtain are shown here on the bottom right um, for our thermistor in the shower and then also for the disturbance from the sink. S to simulate it, we've set up this block diagram in Simulink. Uh, the nonlinear gain was put into this disturbance function, disturbance gain function here. It's a uh, custom MATLAB block. We, um, to follow the information through, we start with a set point here. Um, it's taken to a, a gain. This is just the PID gain. Um, and then this PID controller controls it from 0 to 1. Um, we also integrated the feed forward, and because they needed to be added after the PID, we actually added a saturation block right here, which means that we could control the extent to which the valve could open after the feed forward and the PID controller both acted on the, um, the, me the measurements and the air. Uh, that valve measurement um, right here is the actual valve position, and this affects both the disturbance gain, which in turn affects the feed forward effect, as well as going to directly through the shower. So again, this goes straight through to the shower temperature. Up here we have the disturbance, which is somebody washing their hands for 30 seconds. The uh, 30, the first 10 seconds are actually them trying to dial in the correct temperature, and so they, you know, don't turn it on full blast all the way until they find the correct temperature. That, that's what those blocks up there are doing. And this is the uh, time, the dynamics for our disturbance. And this comes back. You'll notice the thermistor dynamics down here as well that we included. Those numbers you, that you see are in 50ths of a second. That's why they're different than what they said on the last slide. Here's the performance. Without any control, you lose 8 degrees on your shower uh, temperature. And the, the, this, is the, this is deviation variables from a set point of 42 degrees. Uh, 8 degrees is really significant, let me tell you. It, it, was, my, it was my shower. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, luckily, feed-forward control is actually very, um, very good at responding. Um, the only reason why we integrated it with a PI control is because it kept it better. Uh, you actually have a quicker response right here. You can see that it responds a little bit, a little bit faster, where the feed forward alone stays a little bit farther away from set point. So PI control was the best. We tried PID, but that did not work, and just tried a lot of different settings as described in our paper to show the uh, optimal parameters. So the biggest application um, for this mixing system <coughs> is mixing steam for industrial applications. Um, if we mix high pressure and low pressure steam, we get an intermediate grade um, that can be used for heating many different industrial processes. Um, one device that's used to do that is something called a thermal compressor. Um, that by just changing the valve position like in our system, um, we can accurately mix the high pressure and low pressure steam um, to get the steam that, that we need. So, um, any questions?